Hey folks, it's James, and welcome to day one of our new series, The 12 Days of SketchUp for iPad. Whether you're an expert or you haven't even tried SketchUp for iPad yet, I'm going to share the 12 most important tips I know that are not obvious when first trying SketchUp for iPad, but that will turn you into a power user in just um, 12 days. So get out your iPad, download the free SketchUp files and assets I use in this series at the link in the description below, and get ready for day one, the trick to getting started with SketchUp for iPad. Who knew a pencil could do this? When you first launch SketchUp for iPad, you'll see this is your home screen. It comes with a new sample model already loaded up. So let's open that before we import our own model. Okay, nice design and useful if you don't have one of your own models at hand. Meantime, on the left side, you see the home button at the top, then your portal to Trimble Connect, which is essentially cloud storage to keep your projects synced across devices. Then you'll see the little college graduation cap, which is the learn icon, where you'll find very quick little reminders of some of the basics. And lastly, you'll see the feedback icon. Let's tap the home button again, and this time you're going to want to import one of your own models before we test this out. So go ahead and tap create new up here to the left, and then at the top left, tap the import arrow and choose any one of your recent SketchUp models stored in your iPad files. Then when you're sure you have the right one, tap on the screen to finalize the import. I'll choose this one here that I used from my recent Morfolio Shadow Maker video. And now let's just explore how you navigate by touch in the new SketchUp for iPad. Start by putting your finger right in the middle of the model and move it around and you'll see that you can orbit the model in this one finger mode. Now use two fingers side to side and up and down to pan around the model this way. Now use pinch and zoom with two fingers to zoom into the model when you spread your fingers and zoom back out when you pinch them back together. This is the equivalent of zooming in without changing the field of view. Also, you can make this quick pinching motion to see all of your work within the iPad frame, making it very convenient to get back to the big picture with one simple gesture, something many of us wish desktop SketchUp would do. But what about changing the field of view, that most tedious of tasks we all dread doing in desktop SketchUp? Well, that has now been radically simplified, and all you need to do is use three fingers in an up and down movement to change the field of view in real time, allowing those of us whose livelihoods depend on the beauty of our SketchUp scenes to get exactly the right camera lens and wide angle or telephoto effect we need. So that's how you navigate around with one, two, and three finger touches. Now let's go for broke and see if four fingers does anything. And sure enough, four fingers lets you switch back and forth to different applications. So that's navigation by touch. But before we find out where the good people at SketchUp have hidden all the tools, I want to give you one more quick taste of how potentially awesome this pencil interface is. Using our new finger skills, let's pan over to the side of the model over here. This exercise is going to involve both this new auto shape icon here between the eraser and the rectangle tool and these front and back arrows at the top left next to the home button. What I want you to do with me is tap on the auto shape icon, then make a quick circle anywhere in the gray area and watch what happens. Let's try that again. Tap the back arrow next to the home icon to go back a step. Reactivate the auto shape tool and draw a couple of freehand circles. They don't have to be well drawn, pausing long enough after each one to let SketchUp complete the circles. In fact, I'll do a little experiment here and actually try to make a poorly drawn circle to see at what point SketchUp cannot figure out what I'm doing. And you'll see that it's actually pretty hard to draw a circle so poorly that SketchUp can't figure it out. Now let's tap out of our circle world and this time draw some rectangles. But now let's go a step further and add a vertical line after we draw one of our funky freehand rectangles and watch what happens. Notice that the rectangle doesn't even have to be drawn particularly well for SketchUp to understand roughly the size and the height of the rectangle you want to draw. The rectangle rises to the height of the vertical line you draw. So if I take it up here, I get a skyscraper. But if I only take it up here, I get a low warehouse building. We talked about how you can do two finger tap to go backward, but this time let's use the new pencil eraser to delete these lines by simply scrubbing over them. Now let's try something really wild. 
This time, don't draw a circle or rectangle, but make kind of a scrubby cloud shape like I'm showing here and see what happens. Well, not like that, because that time I got a sphere. Don't ask me how, but somehow SketchUp has figured out that you want to draw either a rectangle or a cubic rectangle in the shape of your freehand scroll. If my scrubby cloud is too angular, SketchUp thinks I want a rectangle. But when I make these loopy shapes, I get a volumetric rectangle. And of course, all of these auto-shaped cubes and cylinders, no matter how you draw them, can be partially or completely activated, selected, moved around, resized, rescaled, just like in desktop SketchUp. So now you can create them with a pencil, but then modify them to exactly what you need using the normal methods. Oh, and that reminds me, we've talked about selecting surfaces and objects with one, two, and three tap gestures, but let me quickly show you the group selection tool, which is this little arrow in a dotted teardrop shape up here. Just tap that and draw a circle around the part of your drawing you want to select. You can select one object at a time, or even one surface at a time when it's not in a group mode. Or you can come down here at the bottom and choose the Add to Selection tool or the Subtract from Selection tool and get all those advantages of the group selection. And of course, none of these cubic rectangles we've been creating would be complete without doors and windows. So let's go back up and tap the Auto Shape tool and then draw a crude version of a door with a doorknob on the right side. And look what happens. SketchUp has recognized the graphic symbol for a door with a doorknob on the side and automatically generated a door. Now let's do the same for a casement window with the hinges on the right side. And voila, a three-dimensional casement window. And with another move that suggests a really interesting future, if you double tap on that casement, up comes almost a manufacturer's sizing panel. Now it's not associated with a specific manufacturer yet, but look at all this versatility. You can even change the window opening angle. And of course you can move this up and down or around just like you could any simple square or line. This is obviously no replacement for Revit or the precision of BIM, but with these features, being able to draw picture windows, awning windows, left opening sliding doors, right opening sliding doors, it's just a real shortcut to help you get even further along the road in your early concept design. To go deeper and really master SketchUp for iPad, remember to check out the online courses I offer in the link in the description below. To keep learning how SketchUp for iPad takes your iPad architecture to the next level, click on this image and I'll see you in the next lesson.